name and we're showing the latitude, longitude, and the, the ID. So that is the second demo of showing list data uh, within a list view on Android. So the next step is we want to use intents. So what exactly are intents? So intents are used with activities so you can navigate between uh, different activities within your app. And you can also use an intent to navigate outside of your app. For example, if you want to send a mail, set an alarm, show maps, or anything like that, you can use an intent and pass parameters into those, uh, through those intents to the other applications. And you can also pass parameters from activity to activity uh, to show different data. With that, we'll just switch back over to the demo and we'll navigate from We'll create a details page and we'll navigate from, uh, from the different uh, states. So I'm going to add a few files that we've pre-built. So I'm going to add the layout file uh, into resources. And our layout is going to be our heritage property detail and it's just going to lay everything out. So it's similar to, uh, to the iOS version, what we've done. Uh, we got our ID, we got our latitude, longitude, and we got a, uh, a web view. From here, we need to create a class called Heritage Property Details. Heritage Property Details. And we're going to implement as this. So here you can see we're setting up, uh, this is our details activity, and uh, what we're going to do is we have a static uh, property in here to get the selected item. Now this is not the best implementation, but um, we need to pass some, uh, we need to pass the object. Uh, and essentially you can't pass objects using intents. Uh, you can only pass, uh, say, an int or a string or something like that. So this is one way to get around it. Using, uh, in, the, in the next module, we'll be doing some MVVM and we could pass uh, objects using view models and we could set state in there. So here we're gonna set the content to our, our heritage property details. Uh, we're gonna set the ID, the latitude, the longitude, the web view and we're going to set the title uh, within uh, the navigation bar. Now to get this going, we're going to have to call it from mainactivity.cs and we're going to replace load data with step two. And essentially here, what we're doing is we're still loading up the properties uh, we're finding the view, but this is the new piece of code that we're adding. So we have a item click. So when an item click is clicked, we want to set the static property of which item it is, depending on the position. And then we want to set the intent of type her heritage property detail, and then we want to start the activity. And that will navigate into the application and go from there. So I'm going to run this. So this intent is, is kind of that uh, automatic building of the segue like we were doing in the iOS. We're, we're going down to the new detail. Pretty then, much, yeah, but it's, it's not as nice as iOS, I guess, yeah. So here we got our application running. I'm gonna click on one, and now we could see details. So we can navigate, I'm just hitting the back button uh, on my actual device so we could navigate back and forth. So that is essentially how we use intents. Um, a quick overview on how intents are used. Now for the next demo, or for the next piece, we need to show everything in a map. So now we're gonna be looking at using maps within uh, an Android application and using Xamarin. So with Google Maps, uh, on Android, obviously you're gonna have Google Maps, um, and again, you could use Google Maps either in their you know, native mapping application, so you could set an intent and 
go out to their application, or you can embed a map within your application. And obviously, we're going to be going the embedding the map within our application routes. And to do to create a map, it's, it's fairly straightforward. Um, map fragment .u instance, and then you add it to your uh, a fragment transaction. You add it to your root layout, and then you commit it. From there, you will get a basic map inside your application. And this is essentially what it's going to look like. Now, you have different uh, style maps. You have normal, you have hybrid, you have terrain. And then uh, to add a marker, well, it's fairly simple. Marker, same thing as a pushpin. Uh, so you create a new marker option, set the latitude, set the longitude, and then uh, set the title and add the marker. One thing to be aware of is the map. Uh, there's a map.map .map property. That property is, is not ready instantaneously and does take a little bit of time. So you, you want to do a null reference check for that before you start adding anything into the map. And one thing that, we've, uh, that we tend to use is we, we do a task.run. And here you'll see we have a callback. And we just um, you know, wait. And we keep calling this callback until the map is actually ready. And then once the map is ready, we'll loop, uh, say, for example, all the properties. And then we'll add the markers to the, to the map. So now let's go in and actually implement this. Now, one thing, setting up maps is, um, you know, it's, it's a little bit easy, uh, straightforward to code. But there is an article you definitely want to look at is obtaining a Google Maps key, a Google Maps API key on the Xamarin developer site. So setting this up is not that e it's easy. It just takes a little bit of time. Uh, essentially, what you have to do is you have to get your signing key uh, fingerprint. Then you have to go into the command console. You have to get this string here, right here, this SHA1. And then you have to go into the Google Developer Console, and you have to set your, uh, your SHA1 key and the name of the application. And as you can see here, have lots of them because on every computer that you do it, you're going to have a different SHA uh, one key. So if you're running your application, two things to check for: make sure the key is in your um, in your credentials, and make sure your device has a connection to load the map. So. So that is a that's per development device that I need to have that API key. Yes, and right. then once you go into into release mode, uh, you need to add a new one uh, for release mode. Uh, once you get it into the store. So definitely read this documentation here. We're not going to go through it, uh, but it is available to you if you just search for uh, obtaining a Google Maps API key. And that's on the Xamarin website? Uh, yeah, the developer.xamarin.com. You'll be able to find that there. So now, let's get back into here, into our code. And I'm just going to close everything down just to keep it a little bit clean. And we're going to copy again some more files. Uh, just going to pin that. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy this lib folder into our runtime directory here. So we're going to reference some files in there. Add a reference. There's some assemblies. I'm just going to copy that in here. And here you're going to see we have the Google Play services and the Xamarin.Android support libraries. So these are bindings that we have uh, that uh, Xamarin provides. You could do it from the component store also and just add them from there. I'm going to add them manually from here, and I'm going to click OK. And what it's going to do is it's actually going to go out, and it's going to download a zip file. So in here, you'll notice it's going to download something, and it's going to need this to compile the application. So you notice a little bit of, the, of a delay. That's because the download is happening at that point. Um, but now that that, sh that should be uh, should be good to go. So we're going to copy also get rid of this. 
the Android manifest into the properties and we're going to overwrite it because we need to set some permissions in here. So you notice here uh, we have a bunch of permissions. So the map service needs internet access and needs to write to external storage, uh, access network state, and then you need to set the maps permission to, uh, to receive. Uh, it also needs location support. And you're also going to set your API key in here. Uh, so, and this is the API key you get from your Google uh, uh, developer account. So and that, that's all part of that developer document in yes. on Xamarin, okay. Yeah, that's all part of there, uh, so. And setting those values in that XML file, we can do that through uh, the properties uh, of the project as well, right? Yes. And there's a UI for that. Yeah, yeah, you could definitely do that. So I'll just open that up and let me close this one. So you notice here in the uh, the manifest, all our items are set. There's just quite a few to go through, uh, so it might be faster to do it through XML if you know the XML. Um, but other than that, yeah, you could definitely go through here and you could set different uh, required permissions for your app. All right, great. So I'm going to close that off. Uh, I'm going to copy another the resource files into here. And then this resource file, essentially what we have are these icons. So I'm going to delete these thumb files that get copied automatically. So these are the, uh, for the list view, for the, uh, to swap between the list view and map view. Um, those are just different uh, icons at different resolutions that we have. So once that's in there, we need to go back into our main activity and we want to create a option menu. So we're going to go in here. I'm going to add it at right up here and so to create an option menu, essentially you're going to override on create option menu and then you're going to add uh, the menu item. So here you see we add the menu item, we set the icon, and then um, we want to set show as action only if there's room. So we're only adding one button, so there should be room, and then we go from there. So once that's set, that will create a button on the top right. I'll run that just to show you. Now, once you add the Google Maps access, you may get an error, and this is taking a while to compile, so we may get this error right here. And essentially, what we may run out of is heap space as it's compiling using the Java SDK. Notice our icon, it's still trying to do something. And get 100 warnings. Let's try to see down here. So unexpected top level error. So let's try to go in here. The quick fix that I found for this is setting the Java max heap size to one gigabyte. So now this is, this is something that really only happens when you're dealing with a map, right? Yeah, well, once I started adding the, uh, the Google Play services, uh, this is what happens uh, for some reason. So and I'm sure somebody will probably encounter this because uh, this happens on multiple machines, for me at least. All right, so it's doing a, it's doing a really big build here, so we're, we're expanding that, that heap that we're doing the yeah. Java build to so that we can complete it. So right it looks like, looks like we're successful now. Yeah, it finished. All right. And now, yeah, so now it seems to be going. So if you're doing maps and you find you're having a, a, a your challenge with your build, uh, remember to go in and try to change that Java heap size yeah. on your build. And it happens on the Mac too, so it's not just a, a Windows thing. Okay. <laughs>
All right, so now the application's loading. You notice we have a new button in the top right. So the button's there. You know, we can still go in. The button doesn't do anything yet. So let's go in and let's implement that button. And uh, right here. So we're going to load the map, and we're going to fix these warnings. So here you'll see we'll load map, uh, map fragment, and then we're going to add it in. So okay. so th yeah, so this is essentially how we're going to uh, load the map, and then So that's how we get the map. And yep. then is that going to put the pins on the map then as well? Or so, so this is how we're going to put the pins on the map. So give me one second here. So right here, what we have 